Okay, so now what we are going to do is look at something called a priority queue. So that's the topic we are going to see and as part of this we need to know how to insert uh, um, a data to a heap. So let's see that and then look at what is a priority queue. So let us uh, consider a max heap here. Okay. So what we want to do is now add a new integer or a new node to this max heap. So we have a max heap of 10 elements here. So we want to add one more element to this max heap. So let us say, uh, so this is a given max heap from index 0 to 9. So now we want to add a new uh, data. So let us say the data is 9. So we need to uh, uh, again make sure after the insertion the uh, binary tree uh, stays as a max heap. So as a first step, what we'll do is we'll insert that new node with uh, whatever data it is, in this case 9, um, as the uh, node uh, in the last level such that the binary tree stays as essentially complete. So this is the only place we can insert the node. If you insert it anywhere else, the binary tree will not stay as essentially complete. So we have to insert this uh, as the uh, child node of the last internal node. So the last internal node is index 4. So uh, we have to insert it as the child node of that index. Now it depends on the case. So if this node has both the child nodes, we have to insert actually as a child node of the first leaf node. So it depends on the structure of the binary tree. So if the last internal node has both the left child as well as the right child, we have to insert it as the left child as the first leaf node. So we have to look out for the structure. So in this example here, the, la uh, the proper place to insert the new node will be as the right child of the uh, last internal node. So that would be the appropriate position for this uh, new node. Now once you insert the new node at that index 10 in this case. Um, now okay so one other way you can also figure out uh, what should be the node you should uh, insert as a child. So the index for the node we are going to insert is going to be index 10. Now we know from the heap property that for a node at index j, the parent node is going to be at index j over 2 minus 1. So if you go back to an example here, the, the array base property for um, heap. Okay, so if a node as a, is at index j, the parent node is going to be actually j minus 1 over 2. So that's the same as selling j over 2 minus 1, but this is some, something uh, that's what we have seen here. So let us stay with what you have seen. So the parent node is going to be at index j minus 1 over 2. So in our example there, the index where we uh, of the node new node that we are going to have is index 10. So it's going to be 10 minus 1 over 2. So 10 minus 1 is 9, 9 divided by 2. This is integer division. So that's going to be index 4. So that is how, that is how you could also figure out very formally what is the parent node at which you should index uh, in, attach this child node. So let us use this approach. That, that will stay consistent throughout. So for a node at index j, its parent node uh, to which we are to insert is going to be j minus 1 over 2. Okay, so we have inserted this. So 10 minus 1, 9 over 2 is 4. So we have inserted as a right child of index 4. Now, because of this insertion, this index 4, the parent node, may not uh, anymore satisfy the max key property. 
So we inserted here to make sure the essentially complete binary tree property is satisfied. But the other property required for a binary tree to be a max heap, which is the max heap property, the data based uh, comparison of the property need not be satisfied. Like in this case, 6 is not greater than or equal to both its child node data, 3 and 9. So that means we have to reheapify this index 4. So we have to swap uh, 6 with the larger of the two child nodes, which is 9. So 6 comes further down here, 9 goes here. Now, uh, unlike the earlier uh, cases we have seen so far, when we do a swapping in the earlier cases, or the, uh, with what we have seen so far with heap, when we do a swapping, what I said is we have to check further down, right? So, in several cases, when we do the swapping, uh, starting from a particular index, we uh, move the data to the larger of the two child nodes and once the data comes here we have to compare further down and so on. So uh, we did, we went top down. Now in this case when you insert we have to do bottom up checking. So why, why we have to do bottom up checking? So someone is telling he cannot uh, hear me, can, ev can everyone else hear me? Okay, so Bessel, let's check your uh, microphone. Okay, so when we insert, what we have to do is we have to, so because of the insertion here, this index the parent node index where we inserted the data may not be accessed, may not satisfy the heap property. So what you have to do is swap with the larger of the two child node data, so which means the uh, 9 goes here, 6 comes here. So because of 9 going here, right, so the parent node of this index, so we moved, uh, we, we inserted at the last index at the leaf node level. And because of that, the parent node of this index, which is so inserted index 10, the parent node of that index is J minus 1 over 2, which is index 4. This index may not satisfy the max heap property. So we reheapified at this index 4. Uh, so because of that, so what happened is this 9 moved here, and because of that, the parent node of this index 4 may not satisfy the max heap property. So the parent node of this index is 4 minus 1 over 2, so that's going to be index 1. So we have to check further up. So now you see here, 8 compared to 7 and 9, 8 is not greater than or equal to both the child node data. So we have to swap 8 with the larger of the child node data, which is 9. So 9 goes here, 8 comes here. And because of the swap, uh, the parent node of this index may not anymore satisfy the max heap property. So we have to check that. So parent node of this index is 1 minus 1 over 2. So at index j, its parent node is going to be at index j minus 1 over 2. So in this case, it's going to be 1 minus 1 over 2. That's index 0. Now we have 10 here, 9 and 9. So 10 is greater than both its child node data. So that is fine. So it, uh, we don't have to do any swapping further up. So that is something we have to understand. So when we insert a new data node, we insert it at the uh, last level of the binary tree and make sure it is essentially complete. But because of that insertion at the last level, the max heap property of the parent node where we inserted may not be satisfied anymore. So we have to do the swapping. And as we do the swapping, we have to now check further up at the parent nodes until the maxi property is satisfied at a particular level. Okay, so that is how we insert a data to a max heap. So why we do this? So uh, what we can one application of heap, and that's a very common application of a heap, is to maintain what is called a priority queue. Now in the in the earlier module we have seen queue. 
and the queue that we saw there I said it's a first in first out based queue so uh, the working principle of the queue was you keep adding elements to the queue that's called the end queue process and you when you dequeue the queue the node that was the first element in the queue at the at, uh, as a first uh, element in the queue that's the queue that comes out so a typical grocery store queue is a first in first start queue so you have people joining the queue at the end of the queues and then when you dequeue the person that is the first person in the queue will come out of the queue so uh, we saw the implementation of a first in first start queue in module 4 or uh, yes module 4 uh, using uh, what a single linked list double linked list or even dynamic array so we could implement a queue like that and the double linked list based implementation was most time efficient we could implement both the end queue and dequeue operations in constant time we go of one time uh, now or theta of one so it both mean the same so it's theta of one time to implement uh, end queue and dequeue operation with the first in first out queue now what is a priority queue now uh, in the first in first start queue each any element doesn't have any uh, 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 particular priority all elements are the same so just you have like again think about grocery store queue people just keep joining the queue they don't have any priority they are just given priority based on the order in which they join the queue when you dequeue the first person comes out and then second person comes out and so on now whereas in a priority queue the elements have priority so it doesn't matter uh, when a person joined the queue so each person in the queue has some priority so when you dequeue the queue the person with the largest priority comes out of the queue so we call that as a priority queue so similarly when you have a, a queue of integers we can define a priority queue uh, based on the values of the elements in the queue so let us say so if you define the element with the largest value has the highest priority then when you dequeue the queue the element with the largest value should come out of the queue doesn't matter when you added that element to the queue you might have added it as the last uh, element to the queue the, f uh, the, the most latest element that was added to the queue but still when you dequeue the queue that element should come out so that's what's the priority queue so uh, you end queue uh, uh, the elements and then uh, when you dequeue the element with the largest priority should come out okay now uh, you could also define the priority as element uh, if you work with say array of integers you could also define the element with the lowest value as the one that has the largest priority so it depends on the application so for some applications the element with the lowest value could be the element with the largest priority so if you want to do that uh, uh, if you want to implement a priority queue like that then you have you can again use a heap but in this case you use what's called a min heap so why we have to use a max heap for uh, uh, defining priority as pri elements with the largest value because has the highest priority and uh, if, you want, if you want to implement a priority queue in such a way the element with the smallest value has the highest priority we have to use a min heap the reason is very simple uh, we are going to um, when you dequeue uh, we will uh, remove the root node the data of the root node is the one that has the largest priority so in this case uh, 10 is the largest value among all the elements out here so when you dequeue this queue 10 comes out so that's the value that you dequeue it has the largest priority so if you want to accomplish that we have to store the values as a max heap so if you store the values as a max heap when you dequeue the element with the largest value which is the data of the root node comes out now if you want to dequeue and uh, the value that comes out should be the smallest of all the elements out there then we have to store the data as a min heap because only in a min heap the root node will have the smallest data so if you want to maintain implement a priority queue uh, as a min heap when you dequeue the node with the smallest data will come out and when you implement a priority queue as a max heap the element with the largest data will come out when you dequeue now if you think about the time complexity of the dequeue process so what we do is we just did a dequeue um, 
I can show you another DQ example here. So when you DQ, what we'll do is uh, remove the data 10 and swap or move the, uh, you don't really need to swap, just move the uh, last index, which is index 5, the data that index to that root node position. So in this case, after 10 is removed, the last element is index uh, 5. So move, uh, make the data 1 as the uh, temporary root value. And then because of that, the max heap property will be affected. So we have to reheap it 5 further down. Compare 1 with 9 and 8, the two child node data. So 9 goes here, 1 comes here. Again, uh, this is an internal node, so it may be further affected down. So you have to uh, compare uh, down and then swap if needed. So in this case, swap 1 with 7, the larger of the two child node data. So you started with this max heap, you dequeued it. So when you dequeued it, the element with the largest value comes out and then you have to reheapify at that index 0 at the root node index and uh, to restore the max heap property. So now after we do that, this becomes a max heap now. So the time complexity of doing this is like what? Uh, the reheapify process. So we have to reheapify it in, at the root index and that can go all the way further down to the last level. So that means it's a log n time complexity. So that's the time complexity for DQ in a priority queue. So once you get this max heap, if you do another DQ, the 9 comes out, that's an element to the next largest data among all the elements that you had initially. So 10 came out, then 9 should come out. So 9 will come out. So how you do that? You make 5 as the root data and then again reheap e5 further down to restore the heap property. So each time you DQ a priority queue, you have to spend log n time. Similarly, each time you NQ something to a priority queue, you have to also spend log n time. So why that could be the case? So as we just saw in the first example, when you added an element to the uh, last index here, we have to reheap e5 uh, at the worst case all the way further up, further up and so on. Uh, all the way further up to the root node index. So that's also a log n time complexity, the number of levels in the binary tree. So the NQ process, so if you want to NQ an element to a, a priority queue, it will take again log n time. So both NQ and DQ will take log n time. So that is a trade-off between a priority queue and a FIFO queue. So in a FIFO queue, you can, if you, again, depending on the data structure used to implement a queue. So if you use a double linked list based implementation, you could accomplish both NQ and DQ in constant time. Whereas uh, if you uh, use, uh, if you want to have a priority queue, then uh, you have to spend additional time. So if uh, both NQ and DQ, each of them will take log n time. So that's the trade off between a priority queue and a normal fee for queue. You have to spend more time in order to maintain a priority queue, whereas you spend less time to maintain a FIFO queue. And that makes sense because as you DQ, you have to rearrange the heap to restore the max heap property and maintain the max heap property or the main heap property, depending on how you implement a priority queue. All right, so let us now go through an example to actually build a priority queue. Okay, so one thing you have to also realize where priority queues could be used is. Um, when uh, the uh, values of the elements that you are going to have in the queue are not uh, known ahead of time. So the example that we saw so far uh, in the module, in the, uh, you are given an array. So you are given the entire array of integers, then you first build a max heap of that array. Uh, and then once you build the max heap, you kind of uh, sorted the array if you want to really sort it. But uh, the first step is what? You know the entire array and after knowing the entire array, you build the essentially complete binary tree of that array and then you did the reheapify process starting the last internal node. Uh, that's what we did in the example here. So you're given the entire array, you first built an essentially complete binary tree of that array and then reheapify starting from the last internal node. So this is index two and then index one and index zero. So we went through all this process. 
So this is how you build a max heap if you if you know the entire array. Now, uh, if you don't know the entire array uh, ahead of time, you know it only dynamically with time, then you could use this approach that we are going to show to build a max heap. And this is where typically priority queues are used. As new nodes join, uh, uh, you have to update the queue or update the max heap if you implement the priority queue as a max heap or you update the min heap if you implement it as a min heap. So let's go uh, as consider such a scenario. So even though I have given you all the elements that are going that you're going to have in the heap, you have to consider them available one at a time. So I'm I'm I've given you a sequence seven, nine, one, ten, five, eight. So let us consider that only one at a time is joining the heap. So again, you are implementing the priority queue as a max heap. So remember that. So uh, to begin with, seven is the only node available. So we build a max heap of it. So if we are just one node, that's a max heap. You don't have to compare with the child nodes and so on. So index zero and you have seven. Now nine joins the priority queue. So you have to add nine to the max heap. So again, the index where you add nine is going to be index one. So the parent index is going to be 1 minus 1 over 2. So that's going to be index 0. So that's going to be the left child of index 0. Um, so now because of this joining process, the parent node index may not satisfy the max C property. So we have to compare the parent node index data with its child node. So 7 compared with 9. Uh, 7 is less than 9, so we have to swap, so 9 becomes the data for index 0, 7 comes down here, and that's the leaf node position, so we, have, we don't have to compare further down. So the heap, the max heap is now 9 and then 7. Now 1 joins the queue, so 1, one will join at index 2, and that will be the right child of index 0. So uh, now because of that, the uh, parent node index 0 may be uh, may not uh, may or may not be satisfying the maxi property so you have to check that so 9 compared with 7 and 1 in this case 9 is greater than both of the child node data so it's satisfying the maxi property so just leave it there you don't have to do any swapping now 10 joins the queue so where will 10 join so both uh, so this node has now both child nodes so now 10 will join as the left child of index 1 so that's how we decide the parent node so the joining index is 3 so 3 minus 1 over 2 so it's going to be 2 over 2 which is index 1 okay so uh, and now if you join as the left child of that index 1 you are maintaining it as essentially complete binary tree now we have to check whether the max heap property is satisfied at the parent node at which node 3 joins. So node 3 joins here at index 1. So check at index 1 whether the max heap property is satisfied. 7 compared with 10. 7 is uh, less than 10. So you have to do the swapping. So 10 comes here. 7 goes here. Goes down. So now because of 10 going further up. The parent node of this index 1 may not satisfy the max heap property. So you have to check that. So when 10 is here at index 0, you have 9 compared with 10 and 1. So nine, now uh, 10 is greater than or 9 is less than 10. So we have to swap 9 with 10. So 10 goes here, 9 comes here. Now we don't have to check further down because we really have a max heap uh, before 10 joined the queue. So we have to only check further up in this case. So we check further up and move 10 here and 7 comes down and then uh, we check further up, move 10 here, 9 comes down. We don't have to check further down. If you, Even if you check, that's not a problem, but it's not needed because it will satisfy the max C property. So this will take log n time. So that's why uh, this is a case where you have to do the swapping all the way to the root node. So that's why any each n queue operation on an array of n elements or a, on a queue of n elements will take log n time at the worst case. So now uh, phi joins the queue. 
so this is the updated heap after we do this swapping so let us join phi so phi will join at what index so uh, it will be at index 4 and the parent node for index 4 is going to be 4 minus 1 over 2 so that's going to be 3 over 2 which is index 1 so it's going to be the right child of index 1 okay uh, so you can again check how it's the right child because 2 times uh, for index j the right child index is 2j plus 2 so once you identify the parent index and you know the index of the joining node which is index 4 so 2 times 1 plus 2 is going to be the joining index so that's going to be the right child index of node uh, of index 1 so that's how you in the code you will really check that so once phi come, moves here, we have to check uh, the parent index whether the maxi property is satisfied. So in this case 9 compared with 7 and 5, 9 is actually greater than both 7 and 5. So the maxi property is satisfied. So once it's satisfied at this node, we don't have to check for the rub because the, the joining happened as the child node of index 1. And index 1 stays or satisfies the maxi property even after the joining. So that means further up will be also satisfied. So you don't have to check further up every time. All right. So now node eight joins the queue. So node eight is going to join at index five. So the parent node is going to be at index five minus one over two. That's going to be index two. So again, two times uh, two j plus one. So it's going two times two plus one is going to be index five. It's going to be left child of index two. So now uh, check the uh, maxi property at the parent node. So at index 2 we have 1. So 1 compared with 8, 1 is less than 8. So you have to swap. So 8 goes to index 2, 1 comes further down. Now because of that, the parent node of index 2 uh, may not satisfy the maxi property. So you have to check that. So at index 0 we have 10. 10 compared with 9 and 8, 10 is greater than both child node data. So we are fine. So we, have to, we don't have to do any swapping. So 10 states as your root. So now this is the max heap after all these elements have joined the queue. And that's the priority queue because it's a max heap. So if you dequeue this, 10 comes up. And we saw that process. So how we dequeue a priority queue or a max heap. So you remove the root node, which is 10, and make the last index node. So the last index is 5, the corresponding data is 1. So that data is now the temporary data for the root node index. So again, that index phi is no longer there because you have removed an element. So you had the array from 0 to 5 and the index phi is no longer available. So um, again, remember all these things can be done as an array. So we have to really discard the last index, which is index phi and consider the array to be only from index 0 to 4. So the data is 1. Uh, so because of that, uh, the uh, because of this moving of the last index data to the root index, the root index may not satisfy the maxi property. So you have to reheap if at the root index. So you have to compare with the two child node data. So one compared with nine and eight, one is less than both nine and eight. So swap one with the larger of the two child node data. So nine goes here, one comes here. So again compare further down because this is an internal node position. So uh, in this case, one compared to seven and five, one is less than both, so swap the larger of the two child node data. So after we do that, the maxi property is restored for the complete binary tree. And this is now also a mean uh, the priority queue. So if we dequeue this, nine comes out. So that's the element with the largest priority among the remaining elements. Alright, so I'll stop with this uh, for a moment and save the video. If you have any questions, you can type.